Welcome to Reading the Word with Luther for February 12th. I'm reading to you today from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 23, and I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but he trusted to him who judges justly. This is the word of God. Luther writes about that 23rd verse, he committed himself to him that judges righteously. The apostle had just been saying that Christ reviled not, nor thought of revenge, but rather manifested love and goodwill toward his virulent enemies. How could Christ approve such malice? Truly, he could not endorse it, nor could he commend his enemies for putting him to death upon the cross without a cause. If I suffer innocently and am unjustly treated, I am not to justify the ill treatment and strengthen the enemy in his sins for so doing. I would approve his conduct and assume the guilt attributed. I must not cease to confess the truth and maintain my innocence, both in heart and with my lips. But if men will not accept my word, my heart must tell me I have suffered injustice. Rather should I endure ten deaths, could my enemies inflict them, than to condemn myself in violation of conscience. But what are we to do? If we do not justify our enemies when they make us suffer, they will even do worse things to us, for they desire the name and the credit in the eyes of the world of having done right by us. They would have thought that they do God a great service by murdering us. Now, who is to judge and decide the question? Peter declares that Christ committed the matter to him who judges righteously. How should he do otherwise? There was for him no judge on earth. He was compelled to commit the matter to that righteous judge, his heavenly Father. Well, he knew that such sins and blasphemies could not go unpunished. The sentence was already passed. The sword sharpened. The angels given orders for the overthrow of Jerusalem. Previous to his sufferings on his way to Jerusalem, as he beheld the city, he announced its coming doom and wept over it. As Christ did, so should we conduct ourselves in our sufferings, not approving or assenting to whatever may be heaped upon us, but yet not seeking revenge. We are to commit the matter to God who will judge aright. We cannot maintain our rights before the world. Therefore, we must commit our cause to God who judges righteously and who will not allow calumniation of his word and persecution of believers to pass unpunished. Why then should I be impatient or desire revenge? So the next time you're in a church council meeting and somebody gives you what for, for being foolish, or how could you think that, or I'd never get one of the, them there vaccinations, what kind of fool are you, or whatever it is that they castigate you for, don't, don't give it back to them. Don't try to prove that you're right, unless it's a matter of uh, salvation or perhaps doctrine or something like that. But even in those cases, people aren't going to listen. And sometimes they'll revile you to the point that they try to make you suffer for it. If, if only socially. What do you do? What do you do? Well, who's going to judge for you? Culture? Society? Other church folks? Sometimes there's nobody to judge for you. Nobody to judge between right and wrong. The only thing you can do is hand it over to the Father. Let him take the vengeance. Let him judge. But be careful. He might be judging you. He might be judging me. Regardless, he's the just judge. Give it to him. Trust in him. Let us pray. Lord, help us to fear, love, and trust you above all things so that even in matters where we feel uh, wrongly accused, uh, wrongly spoken of, harshly treated, when people have made us suffer for whatever, in whatever way, help us to fear, love, and trust in you above all things for the sake of Christ. Amen. I'll see you again tomorrow.